Hey everyone, it's Moose. Uh, what I want to do today is a god power tier list. So I've split them up by age because I feel like you need to do a tier list based on each age because if you did them all together then something like Earthquake would just be better than Undermine because it's like, I don't know, five Undermines in one. Uh, so yeah, let's get started with the Archaic Age. First up is the Archaic Age. How I'm going to rank these is basically how useful they are, how versatile they are, and how often you can really use them in different ways. So for example, we'll just start off, so S will, S tier will be pretty broken, um, A is decent, B is situational, and then C will just be not good. Uh, so we'll start off with uh, Bolt, because it's just an A, it's just, it's just good. Like, there's, there's no way that you won't ever want to use it, like some of the ones that will be coming up. Um, it isn't broken, you know, you, can, you can't you can bolt Son of Osiris anymore, you can't bolt a Nidhogg. You can, it's basically used in the early game, you can't bolt villagers anymore. When, then, if you could do all those, it'd be S tier and broken. But now I just think it's a pretty decent, decent thing, can give you a bit of a swing in the early game, and that's why I think it's A. So that's what I'm going to do first of all, and then base everything off of that. So maybe next I should choose one that's S, just so we can see what what kind of what kind of god power we're going to be working with. So I think the best archaic age god power is Shockwave. I just think this is just it's just busted as an archaic age god power. I I I really don't get it. Like you get three charges of this, and if worked properly, it's basically like having three bolts, or sometimes even more. If you're losing a fight, bam, you just use it. If villagers that you're raiding are, are running away, you just use it again. Um, I just think it's such a it's such a good god power, and I'm surprised that. I mean, it used to be even better. That's that's the crazy thing is it's been nerfed now, and it's still insanely strong. When it was first out, your your units would be stunned for something ridiculous. It was something like five seconds or eight seconds. Or it was just absurd. But it's still, I think, it is easily the best. So now I think I'll rank the eco ones, so ones that help your economy in some way, uh, just to get them down there. So I think Lure and Great Hunt are probably two of the best. Um, they're just something where it, me it makes your early game so much smoother. With Odin and Poseidon, you shouldn't really get late advance times like you do with others, uh, with other civilizations, because you get that added security of some hunt either coming to your base or you being able to double the hunt in your starting base uh, these two are just s tier for me um, then if we go for the other eco ones i'd say rain rain is also an s tier in team games it's just amazing i mean it affects everybody um it makes Ra ex extremely strong, especially with the cheap farms that he can build. I mean, this is, I'm basing this off of if any god has access to these, but especially with the cheap farms, it just makes it so much better. Um, let's go for some more eco ones. So I'd put prosperity, uh, basically both the gold ones here, uh, and then probably Gaia trees too. So I'd say a prosperity, strong, it's a strong god power, you get 80% bonus to your gold, which is very strong. Um, so I'd say that's A. I wouldn't say it's as good as these. Um, so I'd say the food ones are the most important, just because it kind of gets you up to the next stage. Once the hunt's gone, it kind of slows down your game and you're forced into farms and things, whereas that and that's why these food ones are so great. Gold-wise, maybe the good dwarven mines maybe better than, it's maybe better than prosperity because it keeps you in your base. The problem with the prosperity is it's really good. You get a load of gold, but then you're moving off of your gold mine sooner. So it kind of makes you a bit more vulnerable. Guy's Forest is just good because in, in team games, you can give it to whoever you want, accelerate their game. Uh, you, you can use it as a defensive way um, by putting it around towers and then still being able to chop from it. It's just, it's just good, just good, just good. I missed out this Chinese one, the goats ability, where you spawn goats. Now, I've recently started playing Chinese because I really want to, I really want to get good with them, um, because before I haven't really used them. But I, I used it in the Heroic Age. I only got two goats, so I don't know whether it's broken or not. It says that if you use it in the Heroic Age, you, you should get eight. It's basically like a dwarven mine where you should get more goats as you go up in each age, but they spawn as hundred food, which is 
isn't as good, which is why I'm putting it in A tier rather than the S tier with the other food abilities. Then, so these are, so yeah, I've kind of got the food as the best, then the gold, then the wood, but this wood ability is just, I don't like it. Yeah. This wood ability is the Shenon wood ability. So it's basically the same as prosperity, but you get it for wood and it's just, it's just not as useful as a gold ability. Maybe if you got more wood, maybe it would it, it'd be good. I mean, it does help you with a farm transition, which I really do like. Uh, but I just don't feel like it's as good as prosperity. Now we've got some of the the kind of random ones left. Um, so I'm going to straight put this new wire one in C tier. So what this does is it resurrects four up to four uh, villagers. But I just I don't like. I don't like god powers or abilities in, in any game where you're basically waiting for something bad to happen and then you have something to counter that. Like, it's much better to do something a lot more proactive, like use a shockwave to do some harm on somebody else rather than using and waiting to get raided and then using this to go, ah, your, your raid didn't work. I just really don't like that. It's like in the old Call of Duty games where you could drop a grenade when you die. It's just like, why why would you pick that when you could get something to stop you from dying? You know, I just I just don't like it. Um, some more vision. I'm going to put in this situational. I mean, I said it. I said that this one was situational, but it's also just this one's just not as good as that. So vision is situational. I think it's decent. Uh, it's decent to use with other god powers, and it's good to see. Um, Maybe if it was a bigger radius, I, I don't know. I just, I don't think it could be any better than it is now. I mean, it is versatile. You can use it right at the start and know where the hunt is. That's pretty useful. You can use it, um, you can use it with shifting sands or with a tornado or something. Or if you were a different civilization, maybe you could use that and then underworld. So it is useful, but I'd say it isn't as good as these ones. Deconstruct is another situational one. If you get it on a water map, it's pretty good because you can, uh, get rid of one of their docks and that's pretty useful um, but in general it's it's not it isn't the best because it does give the resources back so it isn't like you can run down one of their towers and you know their one tower down they can just rebuild it um the the hades sentinels i'm going to put a i think it's a pretty it's a pretty good god power if you use it on extended edition you get five um and it's just really good for being defensive, especially with the Hades buffs anyway, or Hades buffs, especially with the Hades buildings anyway, uh, but even for any civilization, like if Ra had this, or if one of the, or Gaia, or one of the defensive civilizations had this, it'd be really useful. Uh, Spy, I'm going to put a situational as well. I, mean, I think I'll put Spy as situational too. Uh, it's, it's really good for putting on your opponent's army to see when you're getting raided, or maybe on their villages, uh, so if you you can see when their gold villagers move or their hunt villagers. Uh, maybe we'll put A. I think I think it's it's pretty good. I'd say it's pretty good. Yeah, I'd say this is this is a good uh, archaic age split. I reckon. So yeah, I I definitely think shockwave is the best. Um, feel free to disagree with me, but I just think it is it is the best. Um, maybe if this new war ability gets max value every time, then it's good. But if you're against, I don't know, someone like a Ra or a Gaia that sits back then you're just not going to get use out of it until later and when it's not as strong. If you're against somebody like a Zeus maybe that's raiding you with loads uh, loads of centaurs and they pick off three and you res them, maybe that's good. Um, but I just don't like waiting for that. So that's this, ooh, that's this list. Let's go on to the classicals. Okay, classical god powers. Um, I think I'm going to do something very similar and just choose one that's like a staple a tier god power and then we'll go from there and work out where we think the rest are so i'd say ceasefire is an a tier god power i just think there's nothing wrong with ceasefire you can use it to get you can use it to get a settlement up if you want to get an extra town center and they're about to raid you it's perfect for that if it's in a team game i just think it's a, such a good strong ability um strong god power it is it's 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 pretty versatile. I don't think it's broken in any way. I mean, it, it can be used to counter things, which makes it better in some matchups. If there's a flaming weapons or something, you can just use it. I think A A is a good good place for this. Um, now, just like the other one, then we'll go to the most broken one. So I'd say probably mm, this is this is difficult. 
I'd say the most broken one is probably Shifting Sands. Shifting Sands, even after it's been nerfed many, many times, is still one of the strongest. I think it could almost be a, a heroic age god power with, uh, with how strong it is. It can be used in so many ways, from taking their units into your base. If you're getting raided, you can just put them next to the town center, and the town center pretty much kills them off in the early game. I think it takes like th two or three units. Um, I, th I know it's done in HP, uh, but normally that's two to four units. Um, you can uh, you can use it to uh, take a town center quickly. If you do it with, I don't know, 15 villagers with a pharaoh, you can quickly get a town center. You can use it as a, as a rush to uh, go on your opponent's hunt with a load of priests. Um, loads of siege take down uh, an, an enemy building. It's just, it's used in so many ways. Uh, and I definitely think that it's the most broken, the most OP classical god power. Um, sticking with the OP ones, we'll probably go for the second best, which I'd say is Restoration. Restoration, again, is one of those ones where you can use it in so many different circumstances. Um, it can block out some of the Mythic Age god powers, like a tornado, which is just ridiculous, and it really shouldn't be able to do that. Um, if you're on a water map and you have Restoration, you can normally just hard win uh, the boat fights. Uh, if you're if you're doing a rush and you've got some myth units or your heroes that are really low health, you can just uh, stock command them and get them back up to full, which is just insane. If if you're in a team game and you're all attacking the same place, restoration hits everyone. There's just there's just no there's just no downside to it. You can use it aggressively, you can use it defensively, and it's just a great god power. Maybe now we'll go for the the low the low tier. It's got to be forest fire. Forest fire is one of those things where maybe once in 20, 30 games you get the best forest fire, and you kill I don't know four or five villagers, something like that. But sometimes, or most of the time, you kill a storehouse, and that's it. Or maybe they've built something. They built a building next to the forest, then it's fine. But I mean, a good player shouldn't do that. If you're Thor or Odin, a good player shouldn't do that. So it just, it's mainly used for opening up a position. Um, and it, it can be useful, but not in every game. So that's why I'll put it here. I mean, one in 30 games you get in the S tier, but most of the time it's just, uh, it's just not good. Uh, maybe just the threat of holding on to it is maybe better than actually using it because it's very anticlimactic. So B, I said was situational, so we'll go for Pestilence. So Pestilence is really good, but you have to kind of be rushing or at least attacking early um, to use it. Or if, or maybe if you're against an Egyptian that's going Heroic Age quickly, as soon as they hit the her uh, Heroic Age and build their Migdal, you can use it. But it's very, you have a very small window where it's useful. Like if you were to save it for five, ten minutes, it just becomes useless because somebody will just build buildings in separate places you kind of need like a bit of surprise with it whereas some of the other ones you can just hold for most of the game and it will still be effective so i think b is a good place it, it can it can be really useful you just you need a strategy around it which is what i feel b b tier is the chinese ones it's kind of a struggle of where to, where to put those i think what what i'll do first is i'll whack valor in i think valor is an s tier i think it's just it's so it's so strong um, to just get some heroes out early. Uh, if it was for another civilization, I mean, I don't really know how that would how that would work. Maybe just bump them up from medium to heavy or something. Um, but I just think yeah, it's a really strong. Not, I wouldn't say it's as good as Shifting Sands and Restoration, but I'd say it's better than what's going to be an A tier. Uh, so it's between A or S. I don't want to add in another one because it's going to mess up my screen. <laughs> but oh, maybe I'll put it at the end of S tier. I think that's probably a good place for Valor. It's very strong. Um, where do I put the spiders? I think I'm moving it down. I'm, mo I'm moving it down to the top of A tier, I think, Valor. Which is why I'm going to put the spiders. Because I think the spiders are just better. Um, it's kind of... 
do you want to be defensive or do you want to be aggressive? And the spiders technically can kill 12 units, which is just insanely strong. Uh, it's very good for shutting down raids. You kind of have to be... You kind of have to think about it a little bit, but not really. Uh, so I think it's an S tier, but not as good as these ones. Where to put the Chinese ones is really, really difficult for me. Because I haven't played with them as much. I played against them, but I haven't played them myself as much as everything else. So I'd say uh, at the barrage ability, I think that's what it's called. <laughs> Let's look at oh, barrage. Shouldn't have second guessed myself. The barrage ability, I'd say, is an A tier. It seems it seems quite strong. It can take out some units similar similar to the spiders but not not 12 I think it takes out a decent amount it can really shut down an early game raid or sway sway one fight so I'd say a tier is pretty pretty good for that one I'd say maybe it's on the same level as the call to arms um, which is just like a worse valor maybe it, maybe I'll put that down it is just basically like a worse valor because valor you can use three times and get three heroes um, and a hero villager Whereas this gives you one extra myth unit and three uh, extra units. So you can imagine a hero as being like maybe half an extra unit. Um, so I'd say just Valor is just, yeah, but just a better version. Um, this, this, quick, this quick boy, Great Journey, temporarily speeds up player units. <laughs> just reading it out from the wiki. Um, I mean, it has some ability, right, for an early rush, but I mean situational is it better than forest fire probably not if someone wants to comment and say it's broken i will i will agree with you i've i don't think in all the 1v1s that i've played since 2016 when these th when these guys came out i can probably count on one hand the amount of times i've seen this used against me so i will leave it in c tier unless someone's got a good argument against it um carnivora i'm going to put b tier it's uh it's kind of situational. If it's a water map, then it's just it's really useful. Uh, if it's not, then it's just not that great. Um, Healing Spring, probably like the top of B tier. Like it's a, it's okay. Um, it's not a restoration. I mean, obviously you can like heal infinite amounts, but you normally put it back in your base, uh, so you kind of have to walk back to it. So you've got to have fast units, which is why it's obviously good with the Loki Hersa. But if you want slow units, then it's just not really as as good. But I'd say it's situational, pretty good, not bad, pretty good. Undermines probably another situational one. Um, I'd say it's probably uh, it's similar to pestilence. I'm going to move these around a little bit. It's similar to pestilence, where you kind of have to be rushing. Um, it's kind of good if you are getting in early. But if you're saving it for later, then it can just take down one tower or one building that's under construction, and it's just not strong if you're unless you're using it at like the first six minutes of the game. These boys. I hate that I'm gonna put everything in B tier. It just seems a bit weird. Normally you want like a nice curve. I couldn't maybe I can move some up to B uh, A to get a nice curve. But I'd say like these guys They're just they're just not they're just not too strong. If you put them in, a, in an area, someone can just walk away. So un unless you're putting it somewhere on like a hunt source or on a gold mine, um, when you're also following up with some units, it could it could be good. But it's just yeah, it's just not as strong as these ones. Nowhere near. And then we come to Eclipse, which is probably the better of the B tiers. I, I really I really want to move some of these up, but I could never say that. Eclipse is the same as, or even close to Valor. Um, I'd say this this one this one's pretty decent. We're gonna leave that there. This is just like a bad Valor. Maybe we'll move this up. Keep moving it down by mistake. So I say Eclipse is situational. Again, you can't just use it and like you could just use a restoration no matter what your composition is. Whereas with a, with eclipse, you've got to make sure that you have a lot of myth units, or you're waiting for the titan. Even like you, you've you've got to have something there, um, even just one myth unit you need. But obviously, with an ancestor's eclipse, it goes to S tier. You know, it's amazing. But you need to set it up. So I'd say situational B tier. So that is it for the classicals. So we've got shifting sands as the best 
which I reckon. So, restoration and the eggs, all, all in S tier. There's a lot of B tiers, a couple of C crap tier. Uh, yeah, if you disagree with me, let let me know. Maybe it's, all of these shouldn't be B tier. I think if you're making a tier list, there should be some kind of curve to it where it's like not as many S, not as many C, then the A and Bs are kind of equal. So let me know if I put them in the wrong place <laughs> or if you think I put them in the, in the wrong place. And yeah, let's move on to the next one, Heroic Age. Hey, we've made it to Heroic Age. So similar to how I've done the last two, what I will do is put one of them in A tier first as like a benchmark to everything else. Hmm. I mean, I know what's going to be S tier, but I think I need to work with A tier first. I'll put Curse as A tier. I think it's a solid A tier ability. It's quite strong in as soon as you get to the heroic age, and if you're fighting, you can just dump it down and you'll just easily win the fight. Um, you can use it for the economic benefit. I mean, normally people just forget to move their pigs back, but obviously you do get that extra burst of pigs, which means you can farm a little bit later. Uh, or bring them bring your villagers off off farms. Have a burst of pig food. I think A. We might we might move it later. Um, I just wanted to put something in in the ground in A tier first, so then I can start to put stuff in S tier, like this, like frost. I think frost is just is just too good. Um, it counters things like Son of Osiris, where if Son of Osiris is there, you just frost him and you just put everything on him and he will die within the 50 seconds, pretty much, or lose most of his health. You can use it on enemy villagers, which I just think is just stupid. It really shouldn't happen like that. You can, f if you get the right place, you can freeze m most of their army or their whole army and some of their villagers, and then they get, uh, I think it's 50 seconds or whatever it is, of not working. Uh, it can counter things like flaming weapons that is going to come up later. Uh, it's just... I think the developers wanted it to be a defensive god power, but if you run in and use it aggressively, it can just be so much stronger. So I'd say S, S tier. If it's a defensive use, maybe it goes down to A, but S tier if you're using it in the broken way. Uh, then like the other ones, we'll go down the bottom and we'll put Citadel Center as C. It's just awful. Um... It's just, maybe if it was a classical one, a, uh, a classical age god power to stop people rushing you or something. I mean, even that, like in the archaic age ones, I don't like something that are preemptive, whereas you're not using them aggressively, you're not using them even as a defensive way, you're just using them as, oh, I hope my town center doesn't die. Um, it gives you extra population, which is nice, but then if it goes down, then you just don't get the population. Uh, so Citadel Center is just a weird one for me. It just doesn't do enough. So I think C, C tier is fine. It's just probably the worst one here. Um, we'll go for an A, an A tier one. So, oh, what else are we going to put? I think situational. If you're using situational ones, we'll go, for, I think, no. Chaos, I think we'll put A tier, because B tier I'm going to use as my situational one, so A tier. We'll go for A tier for Chaos. It's not it's not the best, but I'm going to put it as B, even though I said that's situational. It's okay, you get two charges of it, or maybe three charges on Foobly, I'm not, not really sure. Um, but you get two or three charges of it, depending on where, you, where you're playing. And it's okay, like, it technically kills three units and a myth unit but it doesn't really quite often you use it the enemy runs away and then you're attacking them anyway so you're basically just taking it away from them from walking away and then you get to kill them and they still do damage to your unit so it's a little bit of a strange one um i'd say it's a b tier it's it's okay for a heroic age god power um ancestors i'm gonna put a i really like ancestors i think it's a good one uh you can use it aggressively or defensively you can use it um to raid it's just it's just good like it's it's never it wouldn't ever be bad unless you're going against all heroes or something i'd say ancestors is a safe a pick i think traitor is basically just a better chaos isn't it because you actually get them for yourself so i'd say if it's a better chaos it just has to be a tier doesn't it so you get three charges of this um so it's just 
take your take three of your opponents myth units basically so it's it's fine there's not a, not a problem with it i think it's an a tier a tier god power i think we need some more for s tier i think i'm going to have a lot of a tier ones here so again these like um these Chinese god powers. I'm really not sure. Really not sure what to, what to what to do with them. So this is. I'd say that maybe maybe that's a B tier one because it doesn't really hit you with an impact. So what this does is it cuts your unit training time and makes you build faster. So maybe if you're going for, you can use it straight away and you can get castles up quickly. Maybe that's what it's used for. But I'd say it's just a situational B tier. I mean, it isn't really situational because you can use it whenever you want. But it's not as strong as dropping frost on somebody or getting rid of your opponent's army by using curse. So I'd say it's a B tier. Um, I like these hydro things. They actually seem pretty pretty good. I'd say like these are basically the same. Um, obviously one does good damage to units and one does good damage to buildings. So I'd say like they're both just A tier. You can use quite well. So I'd say the hydro pump ability one. <laughs> that's the Hebo one goes in A tier and then these ones that clamp your enemy buildings would be A tier as well. Um, moving up, I think we'll put some in S tier. So I think uh, Flaming Weapons is also S tier. It, it can be it can be cancelled out which is annoying but if you can use the Flaming Weapons you just almost automatically win a fight. I just think it's, it's, so, it's such a strong one. It can be countered by Frost or Ceasefire from earlier or something, something like that, or even just a Curse. It could counter if you don't have many heroes. Um, but I'd say, yeah, Flaming Weapons are just a very strong god power. It's one that a lot of people would be scared of. Or like, oh, they got Flaming Weapons, watch out. You really have to play around it. Just like Frost, but you've got to play around it. Another one is Underworld. You have really got to play around that. Underworld is scary. If you know that they have they have underworld you can't overextend too much because if you overextend and then they just underworld over to your base and kill your back town center or, or something like that or go on your gold mine um underworld is extremely strong uh locusts i would say is a tier too it's just uh it's just decent you normally kill a couple of villages uh, maybe it's b tier i don't know like it isn't situational but it's one of those things it's like sometimes you get the perfect locust and then it's s tier right if you always get the perfect locust and you kill like six to eight villages and a load of farms or or a load of farms you know then it's just really good but normally you kind of drop it on a gold mine and then the villagers spread and you've got like a load of half hp villagers and it's just then it's just a bit weak so i'd say it's anywhere from b to s it's really hard to place um but i'd say because it doesn't because you can use it and not get any kills, I'd say then it's got to be B tier, right? Um, bronze, I'm gonna put ugh. bronze is probably B, because it's quite it's quite underwhelming. Unless you have like a huge army and you hit everything and all the stars align, then bronze is fine, right? But if you've got up to the heroic age and you've got a handful of units, you've just got to wait to use it, and it's just not as good as something which is quick impact, like a frost where you can just drop it on. You can drop it on, or even flaming weapons you can use with not many units, um, and it's still strong. So I'd say bronze just isn't as good as those. I'd say the situation was fine. Um, I'm gonna like this curve. Ra I'm gonna like this curve rounding out. I'd say Hesperid's tree is A. It's not immediate impact but going on for the rest of the game you have extra population and you can't really argue with that you get five myth units that are they're not the best myth units but you get five of them for free and there's think they're three populations you basically get 15 population better than your opponent so i'd say it's got to be a tier it blocks god powers but i mean not really it's in such a small radius you can just unless you put them both next to each other you can't really block much uh, then Walking Woods, I'm going to put B tier. It's again situational. It's way better now. You can uh, you can actually control them. Um, back back when the game was first out, you just put the Walking Woods down, and then somebody could just run their unit away, uh, and then and then delete it way. Or, you know, <laughs> they could just delete it nowhere near the base, and it was just useless. But um, now it's obviously much much better but i'd say b tier i mean maybe a tier i mean maybe people just don't use it because of how bad it used to be um maybe even a tier um 
I'll put it A tier. I actually quite I quite quite like it. I kinda of taught myself into it. So that's the heroic cage god powers. So we've got Frost is Frost is the best, Cyrodiil's the worst. Uh, <laughs> everything else kind of in the middle. Um again with the Chinese ones, especially this one, I'm not really sure. Maybe someone's gonna say this is this is broken. I think these are fine to be placed in A. These the hydro pump and the clamp around the towers and stuff. Because this is like a mini earthquake, right? You can just use it and kind of do little bits of damage, then go in and finish it off. Um, but this, yeah, I'm not really sure. So yeah, on to Mythic Age. Okay, Mythic Age. Mythic Age God Powers. Ooh, which one is the most broken? It's going to be really difficult to, to say because, I mean, I don't think we're looking at any C tiers. I don't think anything is bad. Like, there's nothing that's bad. Um, even some of the some of the weaker god powers are just... Uh, it's going to be really difficult to put some in, something in A. I'd say just decent. Yeah, I'd say this guy is probably A, isn't, isn't A tier. A prosperity is just an all-round good god power. If everyone gets the earthquakes and the tornadoes and they've done their damage and then the game's still going 10 to 15 minutes later, then you've basically just paid for yourself with this. I think it's like 10 extra villagers you basically get from its worth of food, wood and gold. It's just a solid one. It's not broken. I mean, if you've got way more resources, maybe it would it would be broken. I mean, you don't get the immediate impact of hitting the Mythic Age and going bam and dropping a lightning storm. Um, but A tier, you can't really go wrong with it. It's really good uh, if you can't finish the game out uh, as soon as you hit Mythic Age and say A tier. It definitely is. Now we go for the most broken. We're going for a theme here. So best, then most broken is Ragnarok. It's, it's basically like hitting the end of the game button. I mean, you either win or you get killed. Obviously, every every now and again, they wipe out all of your Ragnarok heroes and you've also wiped out them, so you start again. But most of the time, it's either you win with this or you lose. Um, and the, the heroes are just so strong. Um, I think it's really one. It's a really hard one to balance, keeping it as it is. If you were to use it, your heroes were just weaker, then it would just be very underwhelming. Um, maybe if you could just spawn them in or sp uh, choose half of them. I just think as as it is now, it's just insanely strong. I mean, if you go up against some axemen or hypaspis and things like you do you do get countered but they've they've got to know it's coming if you just hit the mythic age and use it and your opponent just doesn't know that, it, that it's coming it's obviously very hard to counter um but high level you should probably know how to, how to do that anyway but, but yeah s tier none of them are c tier i don't think there's any c tiers i kind of want to put nidhogg in b tier yeah, I kind of want to put Nidhogg here. I mean, I don't. None of these are bad. Let's just say there's there's none none of these abilities are bad, right? But Nidhogg is just not as good as the rest. So the reasoning reasoning is right. If you're playing against maybe another Norse, it's very strong because who who are they going to send back to deal with that? So normally you use Nidhogg to drop it on your enemy trade or gold mine or, so, some, or something like that. If you're playing against Greek, they just send their Chiron or Odysseus or whoever back. If you're against uh, an Egyptian, they'll send back their Pharaoh or a couple of priests. Um, Atlantean, just a couple of Arcus heroes, and they can normally deal with it because the Nidhogg struggles to kill them, so it kind of just ignores them and kills other things. But it's so slow that it doesn't really get away. So I say it's not bad. But it's no, it's just not strong. Um, then Son of Osiris, I'm going to put A. Um, it's just, it's, it's just a way better Nidhogg. Um, it's just, it's just so much better. <laughs> um, unlike some of these things, like the earthquakes and the, and the tornadoes, they obviously hit straight away, and then they do their damage. Son of Osiris, you have him over an extended period of time. So, I mean, if your Son of Osiris lasts for ten minutes and does all sorts of damage, then it's S. But sometimes, if you micro him poorly, or they just get a good surround on, on him, then he'll go down to C tier of just, he did nothing. So I think, I can't put him S, because you do have to think about it. Whereas these other god powers, you don't even have to think. You just drop it and it's done. So I'd put him A. 
he does have the ability to be the best one for sure but you've really got to think about it i will put tartarian gate as a because i think it is very strong the amount of times where it's been used on me and i've underestimated how much it takes to kill it with villagers and it will just kill all, it will just kill all of your villagers and the tartarian gate will still be alive so it is strong um i don't think it's s tier but i just think it's really strong um i mean this dragon right is basically like a weaker tartarian gate that you get three times it isn't it isn't as good as tartarian gate but you get three of them so it's like do you put it s or do you just say it's like a weak Tartarian gate that you get three times? Um, I think you could have the argument for both. Because you basically just drop it on your opponent's town centre and just start attacking, right? And somebody has to go back to deal with it. So I'd maybe just call it the same as a, a, a Tartarian gate. I could put it S, but I'm just going to put it there. I'll put it next to the Tartarian gate. Now, which other abilities are S tier? Let's, let's sort this out. I think Earthquake is the best of the destructive ones because it deals so much damage. It just deals so much damage. You don't have to get the RNG like some of them later. And it's just, it wipes out a base unless you get all the upgrades to deal with it. It just wipes it out. So that's an S tier. So these other ones, I'd say Lightning Storm is also S because it's like the Earthquake for units, whereas it just takes out all the units. Um, it's sort of harder to use aggressively because they can just um, they can just garrison inside the town center or the migdals or the hill forts, whatever. The amount of times you can just go up through Hera and use Lightning Storm, and you've basically won because you wipe out the whole army. It's very very strong. Um, I'm going to put of the destructive ones. I'm going to put Meteor and B tier because it's the most RNG one of them. It's if you get the perfect meteor where it hits like three meteors on the town center and two on the fortress and whatever, then obviously that's an easy S tier. But the amount of times where you hit right next to the town center on one side, right next to the town center on the on the other side, and you end up just killing like five farms and then it goes for like two houses and then that's it. It's just ah, oh, it's just so so frustrating. Just that it has the capability of actually doing that hitting the mythic cage and you kill like two houses and three farms it just sucks so b tier it is it obviously it, it it can be good i'm not saying it isn't um, more often than not you do decent damage but you can't guarantee that you'll kill a town center or a fortress with it like you can with others like you can with tornado again you get a bit of rng with it i mean i think it's slightly better than it used to be i know well at least that's what i think anyway it used to kind of go crazy uh, you could also you could actually control it uh, at, at one point i'm sure that that's patched now um but tornado as a because it isn't as, as good as earthquake it doesn't hit everywhere but it does decent damage right um so these waves and fire um i'm gonna i'm gonna put them as a um the wave um, as a cool ability, right? I mean, it just goes S. It is it is probably the coolest one. How the waves hit the units and the units all push back. I think it's a very satisfying go up to the mythic Asian and hit it. The same with the with the flames, right? I mean, it does it does decent damage, but there's no way that it's as good as an earthquake or or a lightning storm. So I'd put them there. Um, Fimble Winter is a sick ability, S tier for sure. When you hit hit through tier and you hit Fimble Winter. The Fimble Winter, uh, especially in a team game, if you've got three and you know it spawns so many packs of wolves, it is very very strong. Implode, <laughs> implode's tricky because it can be it can be an S tier hit everything, but you need the stars to align for that. But I don't. Mm, I'm gonna put it here. It can be really good. Like okay, none none of these god powers are bad. Let's just say that. None of these god powers are bad, but I think implode needs the most setup from needs the most setup from everything. Like earthquake, you don't need any units to be there. You just use it, and it's better than implode. Lightning storm, you don't. Well, I don't know. You need, maybe maybe need a bit of setup for lightning storm. But yeah, anyway, implode. It could be S tier, but it's B tier. <laughs> then the last one, vortex. I'm gonna put vortex as S. I, I think if it wasn't on a 60 second cooldown, it would be down here. But the 60 second cooldown is 
you use all these siege and heavy myth units to attack a town center, takes 60 sec or takes four, 45 seconds, whatever. The units come back to defend, you vortex somewhere else. Very, very strong. Um, and that's why I think it's S tier. I think, yeah, I don't think there's anything that's C tier here. I think this is all this is all good. Maybe I'll put this meteor here, rather than the Nidhogg. So yeah, that is it for my tier list. Um, again, for this one, if you disagree with anything, please please let me know. For any of the Archaic Age to Mythic Age ones, I really want to know anyone else's in, uh, input. Uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.